Hi, Dr. Dave here to demonstrate how to accurately predict carom direction for rolling cue ball shots. The carom angle is the amount the cue ball deflects off the object ball. Being able to predict this is useful to detect a possible scratch, to plan breakout and carom shots, and to visualize position play paths through traffic. My 30 degree roll peace sign technique can be used to predict cue ball carom direction for rolling cue ball shots between a quarter ball and three quarter ball hit. Here's a quarter ball hit. And here's a three quarter ball hit. The center of the range is a half ball hit. If your peace sign is well calibrated and if you know how to adjust it for different shots, you can very accurately predict where the cue ball will head with a follow shot. See the cue ball control video linked in the video description if you want to learn all the details. For cuts fuller than a three quarter ball hit, the three times the angle system gives good results. You can use the cue to visualize the cut angle and copy it three times to find the carom direction. You can also approximate cue ball carom direction for cuts thinner than a quarter ball hit using the 70% rule. For a thin hit, the cue ball heads in a direction 70% or about 3 quarters of the way from the aiming line to the tangent line. Wouldn't it be nice if there were a single system that could accurately predict rolling cue ball carom direction for any cut angle? Well, there is such a system. It was originally discovered in the early 1800s by the great mathematician and physicist Coriolis. An analysis linked in the video description shows the basis for the system. The theoretical carom direction for a rolling cue ball is always along a line two-sevenths of the way from the tangent line to the cue ball aiming line. I call it the rolling carom angle or RCA system. Since two-sevenths is close to a quarter, Bob Jewett suggested you can use your cue or any known length to help visualize this direction. Starting with the tip at the ghost ball position, with the cue pointing to the pocket, parallel shift the cue along a tangent line until the butt of the cue is aligned with the aiming line through the cue ball and ghost ball position. The quarter point on the cue, which is easy to visualize by taking half of half, will then point to the cue ball carom direction. In this video, I will use just the shaft length instead of the full cue to show how the method works. Again, start with the tip at the ghost ball position with the cue pointing to the pocket and parallel shift the tip along the tangent line until the joint of the cue is aligned with the aiming line through the cue ball and ghost ball position. Be sure to carefully check that the cue is parallel to the line to the pocket and the tip is along the tangent line before continuing, otherwise the method will not work very well. Now visualize the quarter point by bisecting the shaft twice. A line through this point and the ghost ball will be in the carom angle direction. Because the quarter point is an approximation, the predicted direction is off slightly. Patrick Johnson recently suggested that instead of using the cue, which can sometimes be awkward, you can just visualize a line between the cue ball and tangent line and find the quarter point of that. Here I'm applying the method at the table. I recently did an analysis to determine the length proportion instead of 2 sevenths or 1 fourth that would yield perfect results. 2 sevenths is a theoretical value assuming a perfect cue ball object ball collision with no energy loss or friction effects. And a quarter is just an easy to visualize approximation of the theoretical value. Based on my new analysis, the optimal length fraction is 0 0.281. 0.281 is between a quarter and a third, so an improved technique is to visualize between a quarter and third of the length, which is fairly easy for most people to do. You can also just estimate a little more than a quarter. An easier and more accurate approach is just to mark the 0.281 point on your cue. Then you won't need to visualize or estimate anything. If using the full length of a standard 58 inch cue, the 0.281 point is at 16.3 inches. This is too close to the bridging and visible part of the shaft, so it is better to mark the butt instead. Again, if using the full length of the cue, the point should be at 16.3 inches. I will use only the butt as the reference length. If the butt is the standard 29 inch length, the point should be at 8.2 inches. 
Luckily, this is right in the middle of my wrap, so I don't really need to mark it, but I will so you can clearly see the point in my demonstrations. Again, start with the end at the ghost ball and parallel shift until the other end is in line with the cue ball and ghost ball. Then aligns for the point and ghost ball gives the carom direction. As you can see, the method works very well. The point .281 point works well for every cut angle from very full to very thin. Here's a really full hit. Here's a three quarter ball hit. Here's a half ball hit. Here's a quarter ball hit. With any of the RCA approaches, instead of starting with the cue along the aiming line and shifting down the tangent line, you can instead start with the cue in the tangent line direction and shift along the line to the pocket. Again, I am using just the butt and not the full cue length. Start with the end at the ghost ball and the cue along the tangent line and parallel shift until the point is in line with the cue ball and ghost ball. Then align through the other end and the ghost ball gives the carom direction. This is the exact same carom line as before, and the prediction is good. The approach you choose is a matter of preference, and one approach might be easier to reach and visualize than the other in different shot situations. With all carom systems, it is also important to account for shot speed. With faster speed, the cue ball persists on the tangent line longer before curving to the predicted cue ball carom direction. With a slow shot, the cue ball curves almost immediately and no correction is required. However, at fast speed, you need to parallel shift the carom angle down the tangent line more with more speed. Obviously, you need to practice to develop a feel for how much you need to shift at different angles and speeds, and this will vary some with cloth conditions. It is good to start with a fast speed half ball hit to see the most the carom angle will shift. Then you can use proportionally less shifts at slower speeds. Again, at slow speed, no shift is required. Now let's look at some more examples showing all the approaches. First I'll show three ways to use the peace sign technique. Here's the standard approach, where you move your head from the aiming line finger to the carom finger to clearly see the predicted direction. This is what I call the air peace sign approach, where you position the peace sign along a line between your eyes and the ghost ball. It is fairly easy to visualize the carom angle by seeing your fingers projected to the ghost ball. This technique is fast and useful if you have difficulty with reach. The third technique is to use your cue to visualize the carom finger direction without moving your head, which can cause trouble for some people. I use the three approaches in different situations, so you should practice each of them. When practicing, place a target ball along the predicted carom direction to see how well you do. That was very accurate. Here, I'm using the cue ball to tangent line quarter to one third approach. I use the cue to visualize the perpendicular line from the cue ball to the tangent line and estimate the point between a quarter and a third. Here, I'm using the marked cue approach. Remember, start with the butt end at the ghost ball with the cue along the line to the pocket. Then shift along the tangent line until the joint lines up with the cue ball and ghost ball. Then a line through the point and ghost ball is the carom direction. Here is the perpendicular version, starting instead with the cue along the tangent line with the butt end over the ghost ball. Now shift to the pocket until the point aligns with the cue ball and ghost ball. Then the line through the joint and ghost ball gives the carom direction. When the cue ball and object ball are in arbitrary positions like this in the middle of the table, it is much more difficult to visualize the tangent line and pocket line when doing the parallel shifts, and it can be more difficult to reach everything. I'll start this time with the marked cue approach. It helps to first use the cue to visualize the tangent line and see where it points. See the link in the video description for demonstrations of several ways to do this. Remember, position the butt end at the ghost ball with the cue along the line to the pocket. Then shift along the tangent line until the joint lines up with the ghost ball and cue ball. Then a line through the point and ghost ball is in the carom direction. 
Here's the perpendicular version. Again, I start by visualizing the tangent line. Place the cue along the tangent line with the butt end over the ghost ball and shift to the pocket until the point aligns with the cue ball and ghost ball. Then a line through the joint and ghost ball gives the carom direction. Here, I'm using the cue ball to tangent line quarter to one third approach. Again, I start by visualizing the tangent line. Then I use the cue to visualize the perpendicular line from the cue ball to the tangent line and estimate the point between a quarter and a third. With the cue-based RCA approaches, it can be difficult to shift the cue along the proper directions and keep it parallel during the shifts. If you are not very careful with each step of the process, your carom direction predictions will not be very good. That's why I like the P-Sign approach better. It is fast, easy, and accurate, assuming your P-Sign is well calibrated, which is easy to do, and it doesn't require any thought, estimation, or difficult visualization. Even when the balls are far away and tough to reach, you can still be fairly accurate using the air piece sign technique we saw earlier. The other methods are interesting theoretically. They also apply to cuts very full or very thin, and they give accurate results if used very carefully, but most people will have trouble with them. But give all the systems a try and see what works best for you. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave. <laughs>